Good morning and welcome to worship here at Breckenridge Lutheran Church this morning and Merry Christmas. We are here this morning if you are viewing us on channel 12 or if you're listening us listening to us on Facebook live this morning. We uh, are glad that you've joined us. We have a few here this morning. And so we're really glad that you've, you've come this morning. I'm Rini Hasbargen and Clark Dibdal is joining me to do this service this morning. Our last service before the end of the year. Uh, next year, next week, we'll already be into 2022. So we have that to look forward to. This morning, our first hymn is going to be on your page 288. Good Christian friends rejoice. Please uh, turn to your pages 94, 96 for the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We, we confess, confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with hymn number 287. 
uh, verses 1, 2, and 6. <clears throat> Clark and I will read responsibly our psalm for this day, which is from Psalm 148. Alleluia! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded, and they were created. Who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters, and all the deep. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous winds doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. <clears throat> Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson today is from 1 Samuel chapter 2. And here, having dedicated her son Samuel to God's service, Hannah visits him every year when she and her husband Elkanah come to the temple to offer sacrifices. God grants Hannah more children, and Samuel himself gains favor in the sight of all. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. Her, his mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, may the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading is from Colossians 3. Um, 
as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as God has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together with perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the second reading. Please rise. Our gospel reading for this Christmas morning is taken from the second chapter of Luke, verses 41 through 52. Now every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. And when it was ended, they started to return. The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. And then they started to look for him among their relatives and their friends. When they didn't find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you with anxiety. And he said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand that, what he had said to them. And then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor, the word of our Lord. You may be seated. This morning, we are going to have a bit of a hymn sing. We'll be having scripture readings, and, and then we're going to respond with some verses from different hymns this morning. Um, I bring you greetings also from Pastor Ali this morning. Uh, he and his family are at home watching us. He's taking a bit of a rest today. And so uh, we remember him in our prayers, he and his family, this morning. And uh, let us pray. Gracious God, another year has almost passed, and a new year beckons. Open our hearts and our minds to your presence so that we may know and see your love at work in us and in those around us. Let your love shine through the darkness. Give us your grace and strengthen our faith to live in the light of your son, the baby of Bethlehem. Jesus, the Messiah, our source of joy and forgiveness, peace and salvation now and forever, and in whose name we pray. Amen. Was the waiting and expectation as Christmas Eve and day arrived this year worth 
all of the preparation? Did you feel awe or inspiration as you listened and heard the Christmas story read again or sang the Christmas carols? We are still in the days of Christmas. Eleven more to go. But are our thoughts already returning of those unopened or opened gifts that weren't right somehow? Or are they on watching another Christmas movie or holiday basketball tournament or football bowl game or what you might be eating during them? Or are you glad just to have some downtime and not worry about what's coming within the next short period of time? Perhaps we need to ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? But then you might think, well, the story says he was just born yesterday. But oh, how time flies. It was out of love that God sent us Jesus to be our savior, then as a baby, and yet here with us today. So let's let the glory of God's love, because of the Christmas light, light our lives today and in our future. In today's gospel reading from Luke, Jesus is a boy of 12 already. He went with his parents, Mary and Joseph, to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. And they didn't realize for three whole days that he wasn't with them on the return trip. Can you imagine the anxiety of losing your child for any length of time? I can. We lost our six-year-old daughter at Disney World when she was only six years old. One moment she was there, and the next moment she was gone. Talk about anxiety and worry. Thankfully, we had a deputy sheriff from Anoka County with us as a friend. He calmed us down. He said, stay where you are. And then he, he took several, and we completed a radius within maybe 50 to 100 feet of where we had been. And thankfully, a shopkeeper realized that she was lost. And she kept her right at the entrance to her shop. That five minutes was probably the longest five minutes in our lives. They found Jesus with teachers and spiritual leaders in the temple in Jerusalem. And even when they questioned him, he said he must be in his father's house. My dad didn't understand that at that point. But he obediently went home with them to Nazareth, thus having begun his mission in our world. Jesus. The babe of Bethlehem is our savior, our sure defense, and always, always at our side. And his father is a faithful God who has a plan to work everything for our good, and his love for us will never change, even when Christmas days end. My Christmas wish for each of you is this. No matter where you are, no matter what you are facing, may you find some of the peace and the joy that Jesus brings to each of us during these continued Christmas days. Rest in his peace. Rest in the joy of Christmas. He has enough for all of us. We just have to accept his unconditional gift of love and grace and redemption. We hear that message both this morning and at other times throughout scripture and in the hymns of Christmas. They both bring about a certain kind of nostalgia. We like to hear and sing what we know. 
especially in the holiday season, because it brings us memories, perhaps even as far back as being a child. And some may sing during the Christmas season at one point or another, even if they don't normally sing at all. So this morning, during our short hymn sing, listen as the word invites and as we sing and remember and feel the joy and the love of this Christmas season and others. And then let's go out and proclaim it for the next Christmas days and beyond, just as Jesus did in the temple. Merry Christmas, still. Our first reading this morning, we're going to sing before that, so if you'll turn to page 270, we're going to sing, Hark, the Herald Angels Sing, verses 1 and 2. scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Our next hymn, number 292, Love Has Come.
next scripture reading comes from the second chapter of Luke, verses 6 and 7. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Our next hymn, Away in the Manger, page 278, verses 1 and 2. from Luke chapter 2, verse 12. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Our next hymn, number 286, Your Little Ones, Dear Lord are we, verses one and two. Continue from Luke chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Our next hymn, number 282. It came upon a midnight clear, verses 1 and 2.
chapter 2, verse 20. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Our next hymn, number 290, and we're going to sing all verses. being our hymn saying this morning we're going to go back to Clark let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of the body, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. <clears throat> Let's pray the prayer of the people, and today uh, I will say, merciful God, and you will respond with receive our prayer. Joining our voices with the heavenly hosts and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You come to us in gathering uh, the gathering of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, and injustice. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation that we live in service to you and the natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, 
communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through people whom the world forgets. Poor shepherds and in an imprisoned Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are imprisoned, struggling with addiction, unwell, or in need of anything this day. We remember especially Lori Allen and also Harvey Andel and family in the loss of his brother Gilbert. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through the, those who have died yet live with you forever. We give thanks for Stephen, deacon and martyr, who gave his life to tell the story of your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoice in your word made flesh among us. We commend these prayers to you, confident in your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have a few announcements this morning. Um, for those who are wondering, we do not have our year, New Year envelopes, church envelopes ready. We hope to have them ready within the next couple of weeks. Um, so we ask your patience there. Um, we have offering plates at both entrances this morning. And we also ask that if you have a year-end gift to give yet, that it be in the church office before the 29th so that we have time to get it into the bank before year-end. Um, and or Oren is going to do a temple talk here in just a little bit for us. Um, our radio broadcast, a week delayed, is sponsored today by Russell Jacobs and Deb Jacobs and family in the memory of Joan, Roger, and Barb Mullenkamp. And we thank Russell and, and Deb and their family for the support of this radio ministry. Um, tomorrow evening, the 27th, right? Today's the 26th, right. Um, Inspiration Lutheran will once again be having Ruby's Pantry. Um, it says we need volunteers more than ever. And uh, they ask you to dress warm, to come out probably by about 4.30 and, uh, and help with distributing foods. Um, there is an increased cost to um, for a donation of $22, and uh, they ask you to pre-register if you are coming uh, as a guest to get food. So um, that being that one, we will not be having Wednesday school or church this coming Wednesday evening. Keep that in mind. Um, I would ask that all clubs and organizations of Breckenridge Lutheran um, please have your year end reports or financial statements into the office by the first, the end of the first week in January so that we have a chance to get those together before our annual meeting, which at this point is scheduled for the last Sunday in January following our church service. Church council meetings have been moved 
from the second Monday of the month to the second Tuesday of the month to accommodate um, several people. And the Breckenridge High School choirs are looking for accompaniments to add to their Rolodex. Um, if you play piano or guitar and would like to be contacted for concerts or festivals, um, you can contact Haley Borescia, and I don't have a number, but um, I'm sure you could contact the school. That, I believe, are the announcements, unless someone out here has anything more. Okay. At this point, I am going to call on Oren. Good morning. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Oren Austin, and I have the privilege of serving on the Church uh, Finance Committee. This is truly an exciting and joyful time for the family of Breckenland Lutheran Church and all people around the world as we continue to celebrate the birth of our Savior. <clears throat> I've been asked by our church council President Jill Ockhart and by Pastor Ollie to address and give an update on our current budget status. We have a significant shortfall in our operating budget and we need to uh, increase our giving to meet that before uh, the end of this year or we will need to have to reduce the budget for next year. But I'm not I'm not worried. I have faith that um, we, have, uh, we, can, we can do this. We've accomplished much over the past year and will continue to do this, not alone, but with God's help. I believe you all understand the concept of stewardship and how it differs from tithing or fundraising. A steward is someone who takes person personal responsibility for the care of one's property or financial affairs or those of others that have been given and entrusted to us by God. So what is this of stewardship and how should we give back to the church? Well, God answers this in um, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Now that is generosity. God didn't give 2% or he didn't give 10%. He gave 100%. Think about that for a moment. God gave his only son to save us all. Everything we have, the world we live in, the things that uh, we have is only possible because God has given it to us first. We are merely stewards to keep, to nurture, share, and return the gifts he so abundantly entrusted to us. How can we do anything less? We must share our time and our talents and treasures with generosity and responsibility proportionately to our means out of our free will and with loving joy, we must continue to follow through, accept the challenges, and make sacrifices. And you may ask, why do we fall short? What stops us from giving that extra dollar or lending a hand to someone in need, volunteering that day in church, running for council, or serving on a committee? Perhaps we tell ourselves that we're just too busy. Or perhaps it's fear. Fear that giving will somehow affect our standard of living. Or perhaps it's fear that you will say the wrong thing or be judged. Or fear of the unknown, the what ifs. In other words, tomorrow's issues. But what does Jesus have to say to us about this? From Matthew 6, 
31 through 34, it says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. My wife Leslie and I, we don't consider ourselves wealthy, wealthy by any means, but we are very fortunate. We have a home with heat and cooling, we have windows and doors that seal out the weather and most of the dust here in North Dakota. We have a car to drive, we have food in our refrigerator and our cupboards, and we live in a nation of freedoms. Through our church home here at Bethany, or Breckenridge Lutheran Church, my wife and I have really been blessed. We are part of something bigger than ourselves. We're part of a family with similar beliefs and concerns. We believe in the ministries of Brecken and Lutheran Church. This church has given us a home for worship, a home to hear sermons from Pastor Phil and now from Pastor Ollie that make us think about the word and the works of God, a home to embrace God, not to fear him. You now we both have come to reflect on Sunday's sermons and the music during the week. And this hasn't always been true, but it's something that we've been doing now since being members here. So, what does it feel like to give? You may ask, how do we do this? Here's the trick. I ask that you would join Leslie and me and step beyond your <clears throat> comfort zone in making an additional contribution to our budget deficit. My challenge to you is not the typical give until it hurts, but the challenge give until it really feels good. How does this work? Think about what you spent on Christmas presents. Did you feel better about ones you skimped and saved on and gave reluctantly, or the ones where you went out all to give someone something you know they really wanted. It's the same here. Give until it feels good. It's like everything else in life. When you really put your heart into it, you feel good about doing it. After all these years of making statements about being thankful for the gifts of God, of dutifully acknowledging that all that we have comes from God, of nodding my head in agreement with those statements, I've come to realize into this world that nothing, you, you come into the world with nothing and you leave the world with nothing. So I'm finally getting it. We're merely stewards of all that's been given to us. It doesn't really belong to us in the first place but we get to decide on how to use it. And it's up to us to use it wisely and gratefully. However, it's interesting, this business of stewardship. We've received much more than we've given up. So I challenge you to please join Leslie and myself. Take a deep breath, stretch a little, and give until it really feels good. So we're currently behind in our budget and we need to make up that deficit be between the end of this year. And as <clears throat> Rennie uh, told us that we need to have those gifts in before or by the 29th of uh, this month. Um, so if you want to make a one-time contribution or up your giving, or uh, thinking about um, having your church offerings uh, withdrawn from your account, 
call the church office, or um, get that set up. And the last thing I'd like to say uh, for you is that God loves a cheerful giver from 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So I ask you to please prayerfully consider the challenges we face and how your fearless generosity will help our church and community in the next year ahead. Thank you. Thank you for your message, Oren. And now receive a benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord fill your hearts with his love and joy this Christmas season and forevermore. Listen as he calls us to give of ourselves and serve others as we proclaim the gift that he gave us, his son, the baby of Bethlehem, the Messiah, as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, go in Christmas peace and serve the Lord. Our ending hymn this morning is going to be page 298, verses 1 through 4 and verse 6, The Bells of Christmas. Yeah.